Hi everyone, this is Adam from Figmatic and today I'm going to be showing you how to create and export animated WebM videos from Figma using the Tiny Image plugin. Uh, so the first thing you'll need to do is install the plugin by going to the Figma community, searching for the word Tiny Image and under the plugins tab you'll see a result called Tiny Image Compressor come up and if you haven't already installed it there'll be an install button on the right hand side. Just click on that and you'll be ready to go. So I'm just going to switch back into my project and run the plugin we just installed by going down to right click anywhere on the page, uh, going to plugins and then going down to tiny image compressor and clicking on that. And that's just going to open up the plugin that we just installed. So the first thing we need to do is click on this create a GIF button. Uh, so this is going to open up a little dialog down here and it's going to prompt us to select some layers that we'd like to use as the frames for our GIF. Um, so uh, obviously we're clicking the GIF button, uh, but we are going to be exporting a WebM video file. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so all we need to do is select the layers that we want to use for our animation. And I'm just going to select all of mine. You can see down here that it's changing uh, how many layers it's picking up on. Uh, you can pick less or more. It's really up to you. Um, but you can use any Figma layer in your designs uh, for this process. So I'm just going to use those six and then click on use select layers. And you can see here it's loaded up all of those frames we've just selected from Figma into the tiny image plugin and it's giving us a little playback preview directly in the plugin window. Uh, so you can see here I've got all of my frames, uh, all six, and there's a few things I can do here. So I can rearrange them uh, either by manually dragging the frames around so I can click and drag those frames to drop them uh, into different spots so I can do that manually or I can actually go up to this little drop down here and I can click on that to get some predefined sorting options. So what I can do is I can actually sort those visually so if I want to sort them by left to right visually uh, that's going to correlate to what we see over here on the Figma canvas. Uh, I can also sort them from uh, bottom to top so if I want to do uh, bottom right to the top left, I can do that. Or I can just sort them by their layer name. So if I've named them in a certain way in my Figma layers panel and I want to arrange them in that way, I can just use the sorting option there to arrange them as well. Uh, but I'm just going to use the uh, visual option for now. So now that we've got our layers visually ordered the way that we want, um, we can we can play back the, uh, the frames a little bit differently if we want to. So if you want to actually go through them manually, I've just clicked on the pause button and now I can actually go through them one by one and just make sure that they're in the order that I wanted. Uh, I can click this button here just to go right back to the start and that's just going to do that. Uh, I can also click that button while it's playing so I can click on the replay button and that's just going to keep taking me back to the start every time. Uh, so that's the way you can control the preview there. Uh, the other thing that we have access to is changing the delay between the frames. So at the moment it's half a second between each frame. Uh, I can decrease that to make it faster. So I can change that to be 200 milliseconds or 150 milliseconds. You can see it's going much faster now. Uh, I can also slow that down. So if I wanted to bring that all the way down to a one second or two seconds, uh, that's something that I can do as well. It really just depends on what you want to be doing in your GIF. Uh, the other option you do have as well is changing it manually per frame. So if I want this second frame to go by really quickly, and this fourth frame to go really quickly, uh, I can do that. I can make it even quicker if I want. And now that's basically gonna change those two specific frames to be played back a bit quicker. So you can see there, it's just jumping past the second and fourth frame much faster than every other frame, which is inheriting the one second delay that we've got over here. So these are in milliseconds as well. So that's 200 milliseconds and that's 1000 milliseconds, which equals to one second. Um, and then we can see here, we've got a couple of other options. So we can, we can replay the uh, animation infinitely. So that's just going to infinitely loop it. Um, and, or we can actually uncheck that and say exactly how many times we want the animation to loop. So we can do uh, loop three times or loop twice. In this case, I'm just going to set it to infinite. And down here we've got the size of the uh, exported uh, image or exported video. Um, this just takes on the first frame that you've included in your frame selection. Um, so if we have a look over here, 
you can see that it's uh, 1,711 pixels by 1,142 pixels, and that's just getting automatically pre-filled there. Um, a really quick way to scale that, if you want to export the frames at a different size, um, you can either manually change it there, or I like to use the scale option. So you can actually just say, okay, I want that at half the scale or twice the scale, and that's just going to show you what size it's actually going to get exported at. Uh, so in this case, I might just do it at half the scale. Um, and then the last options down here that we have are the background options. So if we wanted to change the background color, um, this is only useful if we're using uh, an option where the images are different sizes and we're using the contain option. And that's going to make sure that any different sized or ratio sized images are going to get contained, uh, which means that you'll end up with some different uh, solid colors on either the left and the right or the top and the bottom, depending on how it's going to fit that frame size. Um, so if you do want to change that, you can change it down here. So if you wanted to do a, a white background, you could put in uh, the hex code for white. Um, but in this case, we don't have any, uh, we don't have any of that, that background color. So this is not going to make any difference in our case. Um, same thing goes for transparent background. If you're using frames that have uh, transparency or PNG icons or SVG icons or something like that, uh, you probably want to enable the transparent background option. Um, but if you're just using photos or using images that take up the entire frame, you can leave that transparent background option completely turned off. Uh, and as I mentioned before, this option here will determine whether the images cover the frame. So whatever size frame you're sitting here, uh, if you check the cover option, uh, the images in your frames will always be made to cover or fill that frame and you won't have any blank spots in the in the sides or the tops and the bottom. Um, but if you decide to go with contain, uh, contain is going to make sure that it always contains all of the image content, even if that means uh, squishing it down a little bit and then adding in those solid colors that I mentioned a minute ago. So those are the options that you have there for fitting the images. And finally, we've just got the image quality. So you can change this uh, up or down. Um, you can tend to leave it up pretty high unless you really need to squash the image size down uh, or the compression down, but typically it's fine to leave it around 80 or 90. And finally, we have dithering. So by default, there's no dithering included. If you know what these options do, then feel free to have a play around with them. Otherwise, it's pretty safe just to leave it with no dithering. And as I mentioned, we're going to be exporting to WebM today. So this is a brand new feature in the plugin. And instead of exporting to GIF, which we could also do, I'm going to show you what it looks like to export a WebM. So I'm going to click on export WebM now. And this is just generating a WebM video with all of those frames. So you can see here it's finished and prompting me to save the file. So I'm just going to save that to my desktop. I'm going to click on save. And probably the easiest way to open it is just to open it up in your web browser. So I'm just going to open up this file in the browser now. And you can see here that we've got our WebM video playing back nicely. Uh, this is just in the browser. So WebM is a, is a web video format. Um, so you can include this on your web pages. You can send it around. Um, and it's typically a really good way to share video uh, via the web. So that's what it looks like. Uh, you can see there it's skipping over those frames much quicker. The two frames that we added the higher speeds on, um, they're getting skipped over a bit quicker, but the rest are getting played back at the speed that we expected. Um, cool, so that's, that's what it looks like to export the WebM file directly from Figma. And you can play around with this yourself. There's many use cases for it, uh, of course, but it all depends on what you wanna be doing with it and what kind of content you want to include in your video export. Um, so I hope that's been helpful for you. If you've been wondering how to create WebM files from Figma, uh, you can do it using the Tiny Image plugin. And if you give it a go, I hope you have good results. Thank you as always for watching and we'll be back very soon with more tutorials just like this one.